Best of R slash Tales from Tech Support Episode 52. Hi all, LTL and FTP so apologies for any errors in formatting. This story happened a few years ago, so some details are a bit hazy. I used to work at a car dealership as a help desk officer, which had its fair share of events that made me question the ability of the human mind. During this time we gave certain people the ability to take over the ad line, we called it the bell line, but basically it was a number advertised to the public, and they could forward that number to a salesman for the weekend or after hours. For background, sales managers would have access to a desk phone and a decked phone, Alcatel Lucent system, and the desk phone had the option to program in 65 odd functions. Dialing zero is needed to dial external as well. This one particular manager called me up one day and told me that he wanted to forward it to one salesman for the lunch break. Cast, dollar sign me, yours truly, dollar sign LSM, lying sales manager, dollar sign SWC, switchboard operator, dollar sign SIN, my senior slash network guy, been in the company for a while, dollar sign LSM, hi dollar sign me, I need to forward the ad line to so and so salesman for one hour. Can you program that function on my desk phone? Dollar sign me. Yeah, you should see it on your desk phone already. Should be near the bottom of the screen of your program keys marked FWD bell. Dollar sign LSM. Okay and do I just press it? Me. Yes. You just need to put in the mobile number as the zero to dial out has already been programmed. Once you have put in the number, test it and you should be good to go. Dollar sign LSM. Alright thanks mate. So about 10 minutes pass and I get a call from switchboard. Dollar sign SWC. Hi dollar sign me. I just transferred a call to the ad line and the customer has just called me back to say that I put them through to emergency services. I've checked the number I dialed and it's correct. Dollar sign me. Oh snap okay then. Let me have a look at the phone setup. Sure enough. Immediate forward 0000. I started laughing a bit but make the required changes and tell her I've reverted the changes and is all good. I hang up the call and I start laughing, hard. My manager and senior ask me what's wrong and I tell them what's happened, so I tell them the story. It was about a 5 second silence before both of them started losing it. 5 minutes later once everyone had calmed down I decide to call back the manager on loudspeaker. Dollar sign LSM. Hi dollar sign me. Dollar sign me. Hey LSM. Did you manage to get the forward done? Dollar sign LSM. Yes mate. Dollar sign me. Did you test it? Dollar sign LSM. Yes I did. All good. Me. Are you sure? I just had a call from Switch and they have said that they transferred a customer to 000. And I checked and it was forwarded to 000. A 5 second silence turned into him ranting. Dollar sign LSM. Well I tested IT and IT works. Not my fault that I'm busy. The phones aren't very friendly in letting US do those things. Now bear in mind, every other sales manager can do this, with no issue at all. Dollar signs in. Well maybe you should actually test it instead of holding each other's DKS. More silence ensued as I tried to hold my laughter back. Dollar sign me. I've fixed it for you now. Dollar sign LSM. Alright thanks mate. Terminates call. We as IT laughed for a fair bit after that, admin next door popped in to see what we were laughing about. Told them the story and they laughed too. TL. Doctor. Users lie. Forward a published ad line to emergency services. Thank you. Next. Me equals me. Boss equals my boss. EU equals end user. So this story starts last Friday. I currently work as a tech for a company. Of course I get to deal with my fair share of bossy people, much like everyone else in the IT world deals with. EU puts in a ticket needing an HDMI cable for a presentation sometime this week. Doesn't let us know of a day, just says next week. Me, responds in ticket with is 10 feet sufficient. EU, probably not. The TV is way high up on the wall and then he will be standing about 10 feet away from the wall to address the class. I'm going to say we need a 30. Me. Orders 30 feet HDMI cable. Fast forward to 8am today. EU calls me bright and early. EU. Yeah I am going to need that HDMI cable today. The meeting will be tomorrow morning. I also will need an ethernet cable so we can connect to the network outlet. Me. 
Well I just ordered the HDMI Friday and it won't be here for a few days. EU. That's not good enough. The meeting is tomorrow morning. Me. Well I could check and see if Staples has any cables. EU proceeds to tell me that there is a little mom and pop shop that carries this length cable. Tells me not to go to Staples and to support the local shop. Also throws boss's name around. Who happens to be an executive. To create leverage to get this done quickly. Me. Trying to handle this situation reasonably. I just reply with let me see what I can do and end call. EU sends email of demands. EU. It looks like 35 feet foot is now is bare minimum and 40 feet would be even better. The cables will be going from the back of the TV over to a post, down the post over to the computer. I need these cables by noon today so they can get this up and tested. I will have to get ladders set up to string it across and down the pole. Trainer will be there tomorrow morning. We also need to get this network outlet lit up. There is no wiggle room on this. Me. Forward email from EU to boss to ask how I should proceed with this request. Boss sends email to EU. Boss, you will need to obtain the cable you need as we do not maintain a stock of these cables and we do not make store runs for specialty items on short notice as we cannot guarantee we will have time available to obtain what is needed. We will try and get the data port working today, however, we can make no promises that it will be functional by tomorrow on short notice and with the time available to us. For future reference, we generally do not run cables of any kind and requests of this nature need more than a single business day of notice and when they are needed quickly, that needs to be stated. An email or phone call attempting to steamroll a person with your demands for service is not the appropriate way to ask for help with something that should have been handled before scheduling the use of the equipment. EU. This is not a last minute thing. I put in a ticket for the HDMI on the 17th. Mom and pop shop has a 45 feet HDMI cable in stock. I guess I'll go pick it up myself. Tomorrow we have an out of town consultant to train everyone, including my boss. If it won't be working, you let my boss know. I'll get the cables and the ladders and put it up myself. I won't have everyone sitting there with a dark screen. Boss, yes they have been in discussions for longer than a month and we were under the impression that the AV vendor was waiting on a call back to either come in and take care of the work or be told not to bother. In your ticket on Friday, you did not say you needed a cable on Monday morning, nor did you let us know when the training was happening. You should be having maintenance or electrical running any cabling you need for the connections. As for telling your boss, I have no issues telling your boss that this could have been handled better than it has been. There are limits to what we can do and how fast we can do them. There are things we do not do for several reasons. Your email and phone call this morning were below the line and constantly throwing your boss's name around is not a good way to get your way. I am glad you won't have them sitting in the dark during your presentation. But this all should have been completed before the meeting was scheduled. We should not be having this timing issue at all. TL. Doctor. End user is very demanding. My boss kills her softly. Thank you. Next. First job long ago as a consultant. One of our clients had a large shop for doing work on heavy equipment. They need APs installed in the center of the their two shops. I'm tasked with running the cabling for the APs. I arrive and get a plan together. They have a big boom lift to reach the top of the 50 foot ceiling. Now the fun part. The foreman walks me over to the lift. I assume one of the employees would be running at the lift. As I ran the cable. I was wrong. He just leaves me. I'm a little shocked. I have never ran one before. However I'm a farm kid. So it doesn't scare me. I'm just shocked. This can't be right. If something happens then what? I'm not licensed to run this. Who will foot the bill for this if it goes wrong? You're going to leave me, a 19 year old kid, at the time, to run this and you building with all your equipment around. You didn't even ask if I could run it. Huh, well let's see. It should be fine. Just don't mess up. Just don't mess up. I get on, and start it up. Figure out the controls and set off. It was easier to control than I thought. Get done running and mounting the APs, and test them. Everything was good to go. I remember diving back to the office thinking, yeah I'm not even going to tell my manager I did that. Manger, how did that go? Me, good, good. Manager, how was running the lift? Me, wait you knew? Manager, not at first, but they called before you started, 
to ask me if I trusted you to run it by yourself. He knew my upbringing. Me. What if something happened? Manager. Did anything happen? Me. Well no. Boo. Manager. Then there's nothing to wonder about. Me. I alrighty then. That's how I got away with something that I know was a big liability issue. Yay for being young and naive. Thank you. Next. So I worked at a small software company as the sole tech support person for about a year before I left, and the company fell apart shortly thereafter. This story still sticks with me. We were in two buildings. One for development, and one for administration. The CEO, loose term, wanted to hook up an overhead speaker so that he could yell at staff from a fair. I mean delivered announcements to staff. We purchased the overhead IP speaker and I installed and configured it. But it was not working with our phone system. So I sent in a ticket to their support. On my drive home one evening, I get a call. It's the support staff I explain everything. Me. Me. Saint. Overhead speaker support tech. Saint. So everything sounds correct. But, hear me out I think I know what the problem is. Saint. The box you entered the IP addresses on of them probably has a space at the end. Me. Come on really. That's what you think. Saint. I know. I know the box to enter in the IPs is just a blank field it's not set to a specific set of characters. Try resetting them it. Me. Sure. In driving I will remote into the office and reset it up when I get home. I get into the system and reset the IP settings. Making sure there are no spaces. I knew a few devs that were still at the office. So I message one of them on Slack. I'm going to do a test of the paging system. I run the test, I get a message back loud and clear. Cool, I'm dumb but it works now. I let the CEO know. Fun part, he never ever used it. Ever. Within the next 3 months the company started to fold. The CEO was let go, and I managed to get out of the company with my sanity still intact. One of those memories, I guess. Thank you. Next. I worked for a large financial company that specialized in payments, you've heard of them, they've been around forever, the head of marketing, a VP, bought some CMS software from a company that no longer exists and had the worst reviews everywhere I could find them, they were based out of NH I think, anyways, I was tasked to get a set up in a stretch cluster between a central US city and a location in the DC metro using recover point for the SQL server slash search slash ISS server, S. We configured all the Windows stuff, tested failover, worked, great, now time to install the actual CMS. I'm running through the install wizard and it just gets to a point where it needs to write a directory and it just dies. So I open up logging and read through. Not enough permissions. That's odd. I'm a duh. But UAC does funny stuff and so I disable UAC. Run through again. No dice. Try a few more things and still no dice. Inform my boss that this is going to take longer than it should and he is not happy with me. I open a support ticket. They tell me to try it a few more times. It works. One down. Three to go. I do the same thing on the next server and nothing works this time. I open a support ticket. They give me the same line. I tell them I already tried it. I tell them their installer is broken and they need to go back and fix it. Nah, Boz tells me to just keep trying while they escalate this. So for over a week while badgering support, I ran the installer for the same app. Every day, on the same server, with the same exact failure, expecting different results. My only interruption was when the devs wanted to watch the install fail and pull logs. Turns out the installer was broken and no one else had installed this garbage software. So two weeks later I finally got my updated installer package. Everything worked like it should after that. Thank you. Next. So, I'm not a support tech, I'm a developer. But this was from the early days of the company, and we didn't have support techs. Yet. We developed a system for a major utility. Well, major for back then, there's been a lot of consolidation. Since. The dispatchers at the utility could manage the work, assign it to fleet workers, receive completion information, etc. Some of the workers were virtual. Assigning work to a special worker would send it to a different dispatching center, usually at another company, who would then dispatch it to one of their own workers. This was like 1991. It wasn't pre-internet in the technical sense, 
but hardly anyone outside the university comp C departments had even heard of it, so the dispatch centers communicated via modems. We had an satellite dispatch center that hadn't received any work for three hours. I took an on-site visit to the central dispatch office to check their logs. Remote access would have made things a lot easier, but the utility wouldn't allow it. The central logs showed that the satellite center had never tried to connect. The satellite dispatch office was at a rural electric cooperative. So, two hour drive out into the sticks. I sit down at the machine, looking at the various parts of the system, trying to figure out what was going on. Everything seemed to be working. The incoming queue was empty, the outgoing queue was full. The communication program, which was supposed to kick off every 10 minutes, empty the outgoing queue, fill the incoming queue, then go back to sleep was kicking off every 10 minutes, but not sending or receiving anything. I kicked up the logging detail, and sat and watched. The program was talking to the modem just fine, but no connection. So I fired up a terminal program and started driving the modem directly, tried an ATDT, and got nothing. So I asked to borrow a phone, plugged it into the jack, picked up the handset, and no dial tone. So I went and told the department manager that I didn't think that the phone line was working. She yelled for Lloyd. I followed Lloyd into the machine room and watched him pull a length of twisted pair off a spool, then punched down one end here and the other end there, then said it should work now. I went back to the machine, just in time to see the communication program connect and start sending data. I stayed long enough to see it go through two send slash receive cycles, then I packed up and started home. As I was going through the door, I heard a shout from a guy at a nearby desk, Hey, my phone doesn't work. I just kept on walking. Thank you, next. The company I'm working at now is a predominantly Microsoft shop, however there are a few fruit pads that are used. I head off to lunch. When I arrive back, my manager and another tech are stilling in the manager's office. I think nothing of it and go about my normal day. A fruit. Dep alert comes into the ticket queue. Log on failed. I think to myself, they must be trying to work something out in there. So I ignore it. Then another one then another. After about 20 tickets come in all at once. Getting annoyed. I get up and knock on manager's door. Step in and ask, what's going on? You're filling up the queue with bad sign and alerts. Neither one knew the credentials to access it. As the former size admin set everything up. Did you look around for it? They tell me that they looked on the file servers, old emails and found nothing. Okay give me a few minutes. I'm going to look myself. I also check the normal places that they checked, coming up with nothing. I think to myself, where would I put something like that? Local probably then move it when I was done with it, but I bet he never did, and his old PC is long gone. I then had a maybe idea, I'm sure they looked on there, but maybe not. We run a local PC backup software to the cloud. I log into it find his old profile and start looking. On his desktop in a folder labeled stuff I find the document with the username and password for fruit. Dep, I sent the file to my manager and the other tech that had been trying to get in for the last hour to get the creds. Walk in and tell them I found it. Check your email. I sent it to you. They finally get in and my manager goes. Where did you find the doc? The stuff folder on his local backup. They have never thought to look there for some reason. My manager. Laughs you found that in 5 minutes. Guess you get the gold star of the day. It's only because you were generating alerts and I wanted them to stop.